Good afternoon. Welcome to the regular council meeting for September 27th. I'll call the meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. First item on the agenda. Uh, I see that John has frozen. Uh, it looks like, uh, well, it looks like everybody is frozen. Moved by Councillor Preichen, seconded by Councillor Hunt. Any additions? Councillor Preichen? Uh, yeah, a couple things. Um, I guess two things. One is uh, our, our PD. Uh, that could be probably put in camera to discuss uh, some things going on there, an update. Okay. Um, second thing is, uh, this would be a question for Colleen, and I don't know if it would be on the agenda or not, but two meetings ago, there was a legal update, um, which I guess turned into a human rights complaint from whenever. Um, but what is, and this can be discussed in camera or it can be brought forward. I'm just, what is the status of the, uh, the other two lawsuits and updates? Like we haven't heard nothing for months. And I know there was emails, I guess, going back and forth with some people on council, but I don't think that Russ, me and Kristen are on that list. So we um, haven't heard nothing from anybody for months. And um, where, where is that at? We can place legal updates under in camera. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And as long as we can ha have some type mm -hmm. of update or report for the public when we're done, that'd be great too. Okay. Tim. Is uh, Tim? Yeah. Sorry. My internet uh, went choppy there for a second for the recording. So, uh, John, can I ask you just to open the meeting again? Um, just, just as a precaution, the time and and uh, the mover and the seconder, because it, it my my internet did go choppy. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, well, let's start from the beginning then. Uh, welcome everybody to the regular uh, meeting of council for September twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. I'll call the meeting to order at five o four p.m. First agenda item is uh, adoption of the agenda. Resolve that council adopt the agenda as amended with the addition of the following items. New business item 12.10, Ben Harris benefit concert support request. In camera 13.1 personnel. Uh, can I have a mover please? Uh, Councilor Hunt and Col uh, moved, uh, Councilor Preichen second. Uh, Councilor Preichen, you had two, uh, items which you would like to add. Uh, they were in camera for RPD and in camera legal, is that correct? Yeah, okay. Yep. Any further additions to the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Adoption of the minutes. Resolve that council adopt the September 13th, 2022 council Meeting minutes as presented or amended. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councilor Garvey, seconder. Councilor Pohl will second. Councilor Pohl seconds. Any errors or omissions? Madam Mayor? Yes, thank you. Um, perhaps Colleen could explain. Um, I, at the end of the page on the last line, a paragraph on the last page, is about the notice of motion to reconsider. I find it's rather confusing that that be on there because we're dealing with it again today. So the normal procedure is a notice of motion must be filed and at the following meeting, you can deal with it actually happening. So that is as per the Municipal Act. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything further? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Okay. Um, special uh, special uh, council meeting minutes. Resolve the council. Adopt uh, September 20th, 2022, special council meeting minutes as presented or amended. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Pohl will move. Councillor Pohl moves. Councillor Garvey seconds. 
any errors or omissions? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Draft September 20th, 2022, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Resolved that Council adopt the September 20th, 2022, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes as presented or amended. Can I have a mover, please? Councilor Poll will move. Councilor Poll move. Seconder? Councilor Hunt seconds. Any errors or omissions? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. All right, tonight we have uh, we have a delegation from uh, Scatliff, Miller and Murray, a draft recreation master plan preview. So uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Scott, the people from Scatliff, Miller and Murray to introduce themselves and, oh, sorry, Colleen, please go ahead. Kim, could you share the screen with me so I can put their presentation up once they're ready? Thank you. Okay. So if, uh, if, the, if the people from uh, Scott with Mill and Mary would like to introduce themselves and then we can get started with their presentation. So go ahead, please. Uh, hello and thank you for this uh, time. Um, I'm Bob Summers. I'm a principal here with Scott with Miller Murray and with me. I'm Larissa. I'm a planner here at Scott with Miller Murray. And uh, what we're hoping to do is just take you on an update of where we are at right now um, since we last uh, spoke. And uh, we'll take you through a presentation here. So um, we're just gonna jump right into it. Hopefully we'll go through this pretty quickly. It's a high level overview of where we are at today and where we are going from here. So with that, um, if we can have the, there we go. And just waiting to see slide one. There we go. There we go. Good. So, Larissa, if you'd like to just go to the first slide after the title here. Oh, just go back to the, yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. We'll just uh, go over the agenda. We'll do a quick project update for you all. Um, we'll do a refresher on the recreation guiding principles. And then we'll go into key actions and recommendations. Um, followed by uh, our next steps in the process. Um, and then we'll have some time for some questions and feedback. Um, so since we last uh, saw you, that was back in February, um, we did the open house for the guiding principles, um, both virtually and in person. That was in April and May. Um, then we did a bit of trails engagement in June um, and spent July and August putting together some of the key actions um, that we'll talk about today, um, as well as on the side, um, doing some inventory for the trails master plan. And that brings us to today's meeting. So the guiding principles, uh, you've seen these before. Um, these were developed uh, with feedback from yourselves at our last meeting, as well as uh, the community at the public open house. Um, and they're intended to guide decision making in terms of recreation, um, as well as uh, strengthen municipal responsibility for recreation uh, development in the RM. Uh, they're in, in no particular order, they're just listed here. Um, and uh, they also align with the key actions and recommendations that we'll be talking about today. Did you want to start here? Uh, yeah. Sure, yeah. So these are, um, as an overview to our key actions that Bob is going to talk about in more detail, uh, they're grouped into seven strategic directions. Um, and these were developed based on uh, background review, um, our site analysis and stakeholder uh, engagement. And um, again, these are also not in any particular order. Uh, they're just numbered so we can easily refer back to them uh, as we go through them with you. And then if we can just jump into the next one, I'll start walking you through each of these. Um, now, uh, I, I just wanna reiterate as well that these are not in a prioritized order. They're kind of in a narrative structure just so that you can keep track of things. This is a high level overview of the recommendations and actions that will be flushed out in much more detail and um, after we will be, uh, these will be going as an overall draft recreation master plan to the public uh, sometime, presumably in, in and around November, uh, that would be coming back to the public and getting into a lot more detail uh, to get feedback at that time. And then, uh, and then finalizing that with council in the future shortly after that. 
I should reiterate too that it'll be coming as a draft to council as well um, in, in those future months as well. So with that, um, we are, uh, one of our key recommendations is that because of the geographic uh, situation with St. Andrews and how it exists within a greater pool of uh, recreation use and that we're really realizing that um, if your, your population doesn't necessarily uh, subscribe to geopolitical boundaries when it uh, when it's dealing with recreation, um, we're re uh, emphasizing that the RM to take a real leadership role in regional recreational uh, service delivery. There are, St. Andrews is blessed with some very great facilities and they're missing a few others, but it doesn't, there's not a lot of logic to always building up new, um, new facilities when it just starts taking away from the feasibility of some of your neighbors. So uh, our first uh, action here is to optimize existing and explore new partnerships and program delivery. That would include neighboring municipalities. It would include um, some of those existing uh, community organizations and not-for-profits not that you already have uh, relationships with. And then also uh, emphasizing as well that some of your school sites have significant facilities to have a much more, uh, that could play a lot stronger uh, role in services delivery. We are also suggesting that in order to get a well-rounded and, uh, and a voice for the community. And when we say voice for the community, we really wanna emphasize that it is important to get a good diversity of voices from both the North and the South of St. Andrews and different age groups in that too, that, we, that the suggestion is to establish a recreation advisory committee uh, that, would, um, that would essentially be uh, simply advisory, but it would be, uh, the role of that committee would be to, um, uh, assist your recreation department uh, in making decisions and making sure that things move along in the best interest of the community. Uh, and la the, the last piece of this, we can switch, switch to the next slide. Um, and I don't know if it's last actually, no, there's a couple here. Um, one of the big pieces here is, and it, we highly recommend having a, um, looking at a, um, using an, an rural municipality wide booking system for all of your facilities. The one challenge that's, that we've faced over the last little while and we've worked and your team has been tremendous in pulling information together for us here, but it really is uh, getting information from all of the different volunteer based organizations on the stats of just how many people are using what and, and what facilities are available at different times. Is, is hard to pull from uh, all these volunteer-based organizations. Everyone uses different tra tracking approaches and that whole reporting system could be much uh, simpler met uh, by using a centralized booking system that would allow reporting and everything else to be handled uh, much more centralized and really be able to um, be able to get a snapshot at any time of what's happening and you start to find out where you have opportunities and where uh, and where you might be actually overloaded. Um, and uh, lastly, you can see on the side here, we've suggested how, um, and this is really does reflect in many ways what currently exists, but kind of a bit of an org chart of, of your, um, of the recreation folks. It doesn't include sort of how it integrates with public works as that's kind of a, a broader discussion. Um, and how we start to look at maintaining facilities and those sorts of things, but really wanting to make sure that there's um, organizational resilience and succession planning built within the system so that, um, so that information and systems are all in place so that over time, as people may or may not leave, that, uh, that you make sure that, and, or, and I should also say that as volunteer groups change, that, um, that there's a system in place to always capture what's happening and you don't have to rebuild every time. Move to the next slide. With that, and it really relates in many ways to how we talked about even having this uh, this booking infrastructure. Um, we we are looking at the recommendation to optimize current and future investment in recreation infrastructure. the The process of that is really uh, prioritizing asset uh, an asset management system. What you have. Um, and not only what you have, but what these non-for-profits and community groups have to really understand uh, long-term what those uh, asks and costs might uh, be, but also looking at maximizing the use of existing facilities. So once we have um, sort of the, this booking software in place, you can really start to see where you have uh, 
openings where you can really maximize the use where you might have a certain facility that uh, you realize is underused for 23 hours of the day and is actually only used for an hour every day. You can start to look at how you can uh, optimize programming in all these different facilities. And, and that relates to your outdoor and indoor so to make sure that, you know, what, what's happening in your hockey facilities and curling and soccer and baseball, all those things to make sure that you can best use your facilities before you start planning uh, to build anything uh, more significant than that. With that, it really helps to, uh, to work with your adjacent neighbors as well to, to talk about where you, they may have opportunities on rental and uh, rental of some of your facilities as well. And then a key to that is optimizing a uh, sustainable funding model for recreation services, which really relates to um, their, the, um, we want to understand the capital costs, but we also need to understand the operational costs of things. We are starting to see um, volunteerism, and this is not just for the RM St. Andrews, but volunteerism is slowly uh, getting harder to find people um, and getting harder to keep people. And we, we recognize that some of those gaps are presumably uh, going to be filled or looking at another way, it's an opportunity uh, to hire locally, whether it's uh, part-time, it's students, those sorts of things to help, help delivery of, of your recreation services. It is notable that when we did our survey that, and this is in alignment with what we're seeing across Canada, that um, typically between 70 and 80% of people, um, and that's right about where we landed in the arm of St. Andrews, did, did agree with a modest, um, uh, and I stress a modest increase in, in taxation if they saw that recreation services were, were being improved. So there is, and I don't, I wouldn't say do that tomorrow, but I would say that as soon as things start improving, um, uh, not improving necessarily, but they start to see some impact of what's happening, there's going to be an openness to, um, to having more um, ratepayer funding go towards recreation services. Go to the next slide. Um, we want to make sure that um, everyone is betting, benefiting from this. Uh, there is a, a bit of an aging prop population currently in St. Andrews, and that's a trend we're seeing across Manitoba. And we recognize that accessibility and inclusion for those uh, that may be not as able as they once were is becoming increasingly important. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, any facility upgrades or any facility development um, optimizes that and makes sure that we we do have uh, uh, an accessible approach to all of our facilities. We also want to recognize that, uh, that a recreation for life approach to things so that we're reducing barriers to entry for, for everyone, for all ages and abilities, and um, implementing uh, initiatives to remove barriers for, for people to get, in, to get involved, whether that might be uh, cost, timing, or, or what have you. And the next slide just builds on that, which is to keep recreation affordable, which is definitely uh, of interest to everyone. Recreation is, uh, there's, there's an organized sport component to recreation. Um, and that's, that comes uh, with certain costs to it, but recreation is a, a larger um, spectrum too, whether it's simply trails and passive uses, um, but it's also recognizing that things like cultural institutions, like some of your heritage facilities are become an important part in that. And we wanna make sure that everyone has access to that. Next slide. Um, it is important to uh, support because we are hearing this loud and clear, the development of parks and trails. St. Andrews is blessed with some really great natural resources and great parks already. I would, uh, parks are, uh, include uh, some of your federal and provincial partners, but um, uh, it is really important and people spoke quite loudly about um, making sure that we have a, a connected and safe uh, trails network. Uh, the drawing on the right is, um, it can get into much finer detail here, but definitely loud and clear. People want to recognize that families, that uh, everyone of every ability has an access to a trail network that gets them in and around, whether it's going for a 10 minute walk at the end of the day or whether it's going for a longer hike to start accessing some of the spaces. And, uh, and so that uh, trails master plan is already in progress and will be coming out. Uh, we'll be developing that to come out when with the draft master plan comes out as well to get more public input at that point. And it's also important to develop parkland policies for the long term, whether that is uh, 
those policies include um, what parkland do you have, what, uh, what maintenance levels you might have, or what you would be interested on. That could be all handed over to different uh, groups and associations, or it could be something that you actually uh, look at developing in-house, uh, but making sure that you have a, a clear policy on how, how you're uh, working with, um, to make sure that everyone has access to um, a, a level of park development, because that is strong, it's a strong indicator of a strong community when you have places for people to gather and, and get together. Next slide. We definitely heard from people that um, that there's a real diversity of interest in what people want to get involved in, and so we want to we want to both encourage new and diverse programming. Some of this relates to a lot of this stuff you're already doing. There is a we'll get into this a little bit later, but there is a lot of great stuff that's already happening, and we just need to make sure that those barriers to to get in, involved with that uh, we can pull those out. But um, there is a great diversity of, uh, of programs that exist. You can see that many of the programs that you see on the on the right here, uh, where households are asked to rank their top four programs, they, they get into things that really are um, community based in a way. Um, and that's really, um, that really reflects what we're seeing as a trend, uh, trend everywhere. And specifically, in this case, it, it does relate to both younger families when we look at outdoor adventure programs, but a lot of the other pieces really make sure that we're uh, looking after our uh, Asian population as well. So with that, we want to recognize and support the role that heritage plays in recreation. The same, uh, uh, the, your, um, the Kennedy House and St. Andrew's Rectory both are seeing increased volumes of people uh, being attracted to them. Um, it's because people are attracted to how they connect, you know, River Road and its connection to these heritage resources has become stronger and stronger through, uh, through the last few years here. And we wanna make sure that uh, we recognize that and uh, realize the importance that the cultural heritage plays in St. Andrews. It's such a dominant place, even when you look at how Lower Fort Gary sits into it, although it's outside of the, um, outside of the RM, even places like uh, Okamak Marsh and how sort of the natural history plays into this space. We wanna make sure that we're addressing programming needs and demands. So we, we've seen a huge uptick in, um, in the stack building in uh, the St. Andrews Community Club where uh, recreation coordinators have really pulled up a lot of uh, active use. We've seen a, a huge influx of people playing softball, baseball, uh, and, and those sorts of things. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we start really monitoring those uh, demands and make sure that we have the facilities in place and, or at least the resources in place to, to help make sure that there's uh, the ability for people to uh, engage with that and find those areas where uh, we may not already be um, delivering services to and look where we might be able to find partners in some of our, uh, um, in some of our neighboring uh, areas. Um, and, and then lastly, and this was guess what I was just referring to adopt a new program development grant. It is considering how we might want to, uh, if, if you have a, a group and or an individual that really wants to start looking at doing some different programming to help fill a fill up an opening at one of your facilities, that, the, that there is some resources available to help them with that, whether it's uh, honorarium for um, for teaching and, and, and that sort of stuff, or whether it's small equipment costs, uh, but really making sure that the strength is your community and the more you can do, uh, get your community uh, building through that level of, uh, uh, through that level of volunteerism, the better off you're going to be. The next slide. One of the barriers definitely uh, can be communication. Uh, as you can see here, people use all sorts of uh, tools when we ask them, uh, you know, what's the best way to reach you? And we ask, you know, select all, uh, all that uh, account for it. It's all over the place. Uh, and, and this is very consistent. There's no one, uh, one size fits all um, uh, approach to communications. The, um, the newsletter that comes out is a significant newsletter. It, but it has a lot in there. And I think having a much more comprehensive and recreation specific communication strategy would really help 
provide a, provide more clarity, whether that is its own uh, creating a, a to, an arm of the RM website that might be able to better track that and really tailor it towards the individuals who are using it uh, could be uh, extremely helpful. So if you're looking specifically for a type of uh, activity or if you're looking for a, uh, an activity that might relate to the geography you're in. There's different ways of designing those things. And then being, being very clear that communications can often be used as a bit of a marketing tool as well so that um, when we're using any of our social media type platforms that these become an opportunity to tell people just how much uh, opportunity there is for program and programming and different types of recreation uh, opportunities there are for everyone, whether that is walking clubs, bridge groups, or a soccer program that might exist for, uh, for kids. Uh, using that to make sure that um, people are really well aware of, of what's going on uh, in, the, in the municipality. Um, and, and one of the things that that can do in communication is, is really start to uh, create the opportunity for wayfinding and identity. Um, being able to recognize that you live in South St. Andrews and have a have a you know the curling club up in Petersfield, which is is quite a significant venue, and we really feel that you're connected to that is an important thing. So finding ways in which um, even physical signage and, um, and and branding can be used in that approach as well. Next slide. And then very, uh, this is our, our last of our key recommendations, which is really um, supporting and empowering community recreation groups. The, your volunteers, like every community, are, are in many ways the lifeblood of, of uh, your recreation services delivery. These are the people that are coming out. They're being your conveners and your uh, then folks working in the canteens. They're on the sidelines coaching. They're doing all that sort of stuff. And we are seeing when, when you know, when media starts using the term uh, quiet quitting, we certainly are seeing that in volunteerism as well. And we wanna make sure that um, we optimize the value of our volunteers. So we've, we've recommended three different actions here that'll have a series of um, more strategic actions within them. But one is to implement a comprehensive volunteer management database. We wanna see who's interested and who's interested in doing what and to what level. We recognize that at times these volunteer gigs can be 10, 20 hours a week, which starts to get a little bit uh, draining and you start to lose people. So we wanna make sure that we are very strategic and kind of get a feel for what volunteers are interested in and where their strengths are. It is also important to give back a little bit to the volunteers and the next two actions kind of sit, talk to that as well. We wanna recognize, and you already do a certain level of volunteer appreciation uh, by recognizing and having events, but also these are opportunities to give some of your volunteers um, uh, training uh, to not only assist them in their, uh, uh, their capacity as a volunteer for your organization, but also to give them uh, to increase their capacity in their daily life too, whether it's professionally. Um, so it's, it's an important piece that really can start to help uh, give your volunteers, make your volunteers uh, make them better in their volunteer jobs, but it also helps uh, everyone else as well. Um, next slide. Back over to you. Yeah, so um, our next steps um, kind of for this fall and winter, um, we'll participate in a strategic planning session with council. Um, and then from there, we'll finalize the recreation master plan, uh, taking into account all feedback um, and any sort of visioning that we've done, um, which we can then take to public open house uh, to get some feedback from the community um, and really just make them feel like they're part of this plan as well. Um, before we finalize uh, that for um, presentation to council for adoption. Um, and then as well to note after that, um, uh, the trails master plan um, will be presented as well. And that'll be kind of happening alongside. Alongside, but as a separate, yeah. So with that, uh, a bit of a whirlwind, just kind of high level of where things are at, we'll leave it there for discussion and feedback. Okay, thank you. Very great, uh, very good uh, presentation. Council, do you have any questions for, for Scott with Miller Murray? Joy, Joy, go ahead, please. 
Yes, thank you. Um, excellent, excellent plan. Like I said before, I was participated when you did the St. Clements one. This is so good. Um, but on page 7.0, you've got the three top in blue. Is that just for the reason to have them in blue? That was just, I can speak to that. That was just, I wanted to point out those that were helping. I don't know for a fact if those were specifically volunteers. I just noticed they were all wearing blue. So that was just to in, enforce the volunteerism that was happening. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. No, excellent report. Thank you so much. I have a, a question. Um, you mentioned in your report that uh, we have we have some things, curling and hockey. We also mentioned some things that uh, we're, we're missing. Uh, can you elaborate on that, please? Uh, I think one of the, the, the few things that uh, are missing, uh, if I can call it missing, um, soccer and baseball are both kind of um, catching up right now. There are some fields out there. There are in different states of uh, repair and different states of ability uh, for use. And we think that there's some opportunities there, but it's one of those weird things where we're seeing um, the, the needs aren't quite at the level, obviously, because we just came out of a gap of two years, but the needs aren't quite high enough to start looking at building a significant facility. That could be a whole other conversation because that could relate to, um, you know, wanting to create a facility that drew people, but you have a lot of those um, facilities in, in adjacent um, municipalities. And we want to make sure that we're optimizing the use and not just uh, spending capital for the spend of state spending capital. So there is um, specifically when we look at softball, baseball, we understand that there is a push to redo the ball field over at the airport. We think that's a great move on day one because it really help, helps to start uh, taking some of the strain off some of the school grounds. We recognize also the school grounds aren't in the best shape. We think that there's um, improvements that could be done to some of those facilities from a ball perspective um, to really start looking at how we can start increasing that demand. We're already seeing more programming with it. And then the other side um, with soccer is we're, we do recognize that there's some of, of the fields at the airport lands. And then we do see uh, smaller fields and we're seeing the registration more in Timbit level in the, in the younger kid level. So we wanna really start using the existing infrastructure and optimizing that infrastructure before we start building uh, new, because as soon as we look at building new, we're looking at having to build parking lots and all those other things that go with it. And it starts to, we wanna make sure that we create the demand before we um, build those new facilities. Okay, great. Uh, Councillor Hunt. Okay, a couple of questions. Uh, I'll, I'll just finish off with your, with your comment there. That's what I was going to ask because uh, at our airport board meeting the other day, it come to us about the baseball diamond at the airport, you know, and I was wondering if, if we need them, if we need that land in, in the future, how much notice would be have to be given and, and the expense of putting it there. But now I see your answer is to, uh, I guess, one of those comments, I guess, build it and they will and they will come. But we know but we know how much baseball is there anyway. So like, why wouldn't we be developing our uh, list road rec land? You know, we have to put a parking lot in at, lot in at the airport and develop the land. So, you know, like, what would you expect the, the um, amount of time there or, 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 or the work would almost be the same with developing our own land, no? It would, but the numbers that we're seeing currently don't really suggest that, that demand for it yet. Okay. Um, so that's the big challenge that we see. And, it, it, and, and the numbers are only as accurate as we can get them right now. Um, so it, it appears that we probably have a lot of uh, municipal residents that are using uh, other municipalities for, for those things. And that's why we, we really need to start tracking that a lot closer to figure that out. But at this time, we'd be hard pressed. The, the cost to develop out on lease road is, would be quite significant right now. Um, and I, I'm not it's hard, we're hard pressed to say, go for it right now. Okay, okay. And the next question is uh, the virtual part of the, of the um, study. How many people participated in that? Because I know myself and a couple of other counselors, we attended Clan de Boy and, and the St. Andrews one, and the turnout was rather low on, on those ones, but what was the numbers on the virtual one? 
as far as the actual who we don't have the numbers on who opened the board, the open house boards and viewed it online. We only have the numbers on who actually took the survey. Okay. Um, and so we structured the survey around each guiding principle. And I'd say we range somewhere between, because not everyone filled out questions for each board. So we range between, I would say eight to 20 uh, respondents per guiding principle. So some of those, someone might've done all of them. Some of them, some might've answered to three or four. Um, but that's kind of where the range was. But again, that's not necessarily accounting for all the people who may have uh, opened the boards and read them. Okay. And so and on, if I can, just on that note, it's, we, we, we saw that quite a bit this year in a few, in a few other municipalities where we're doing similar work. The, we didn't have as high a response rate. We, we had a great response rate here on the survey, the original survey. The next level was nowhere near as good and so we've already talked with uh, Teresa and Kelly about how we can optimize that the next time around and really do something special to drive people out to that next open house because that's going to be kind of a critical one for people really to hear uh, what the recommendations are. Right and that's my comment like it is critical and we have that information moving forward um, you know eight or ten or twenty people is an awful low number for the number of residents in St. Andrews to to um, I don't want to say dictate, but move forward, but like move, move recreation forward, you know, and, and, sure. and, you know, those will be people that want recreation, you know, so we need maybe a little bit more better input, but again, great, uh, great plan and, and a great start. And it seems to following other ones that we've done in the past as well too. So thank you for that. Oh, Madam Mayor. Yes, thank you. I noticed there's not much mention or little mention of hockey. Is that on the, the downside, you know, people interested in that? I thought that was quite popular. It certainly is. It really comes down to we didn't have much for numbers to, to really respond to. It seems like the, the rink is very, uh, is well used. Um, but that is something that we, we, you know, we need to get a little bit more data to really speak to that. Um, but certainly we, we see hockey as having a bit more of a barrier to entry these days because it's getting more expensive. Um, but uh, it's still, we're, we're Canadian, <laughs> hockey is an important thing. So uh, it's a critical piece to have. And it's definitely, I think about the stack and how much of a community center that space is already. Um, and it's really centered around hockey through many, many of the seasons. Sorry, okay. it's Kelly here. I can't figure out how to put my hand up on this thing. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to say, I can say that this year we sold triple the ice in September that we did last year. Um, this is the first non-COVID year we've had in a few, and we're book solid. And uh, so we only have one team out of St. Andrews that's our own. Uh, we partner with Lord Selkirk on everything else, and we share it out. So our arenas are full. I know that. So we, we just mix the two teams together. So Okay, thanks, Kelly. I think one thing that you'll find is... Uh is outdoor, um, not uh, organized hockey, just pick up the hockey is where we're gonna find a lot of uh, people. I've, I've uh, noticed it in Clandeboy and even in St. Andrews on the outdoor when they have it, it's a bit, it can be a busy place, but it, they don't wanna necessarily register. They just wanna go and skate and have fun. So, uh, Council Preichen. Yeah, great report. It's, um, it'd be nice just to uh, get things rocking and rolling there that that project has been going on for a long long time and you know uh i got three kids we live in the community and uh i think daryl can attest to it too in a lot of cases we're taking our kids to uh, west st paul or to selkirk or to winnipeg because there's nothing in our area and what we do have is very small or very limited right and i think the real approach for this rm needs to be working regionally with everybody to figure out what we can provide in our rm that's different and unique than everybody else west st paul is now putting in a state-of-the-art tennis facility uh selkirk is looking at expanding you know to a, a multiplex um st andrew should be looking at you know massive soccer fields and uh you know ball diamonds or whatever you know like there's there's very niche things that, that should be available to our rm and that will bring people here and all of the local RMs will take turns basically sharing those areas because of the, the niche uh, operation that they have, whether it be tennis over there and soccer over there and hockey over there. But it's something that we need to keep the gas pedal down on because we've talked about it for years and has gone on for you know, a long time and uh, people's children grow up and grow old and then it you know, it's, doesn't matter, right? So we just gotta keep the pedal down. So thank you for the report. 
Oh, I have my hand fun. up too, John. Oh, uh, Daryl? Counselor Paul? Uh, Laurie, Laurie can go first. I'll go after him. Okay. I just have a comment, I guess, to what Counselor Perchin said. So you talked about the ball diamonds of not wanting to develop uh, List Road because of, of the cost, because the stats don't show the usage. But but with a comment like that, like you have to build it for it to be used. Um, wouldn't that be more the case of, of, like I say, like having having a state of the art complex and people are going to come and use it? Um, now, is that the chicken and egg thing, or is it just one of those one of one of those things? I know it's a risk, but most things in business are a risk, you know. And and yeah, I don't yeah. know what 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 did you find in those comments or in in other areas? If if you build it, like, has anything been built that is a flop or shouldn't have been built or that size, or whatever, in your studies over the years? Uh, certainly facility development sometimes can uh, not be used to its ultimate out after it's been built, but typically, and I would say this is a bit of a, a bit of a track record uh, for St. Andrews is it's usually they're the community led facilities and that's how they get developed. And um, there isn't really that community group right now that's driving it. I look at the town of Stonewall right now where uh, there, you know, there's a more significant push towards all diamonds and, and soccer fields already there. Uh, th you know, I think it's one of those things, I think that to make the, the business case, um, it does take a little bit more um, time to, to get there. Not, not saying it couldn't happen. Um, it's just, I look at, at the city of Brandon where they've had a history of uh, soccer and they we're doing the optimist fields out there. That's about eight soccer fields. The, whole, the project cost is over 20 million. So you, we need to make sure that um, the, the capital investment has a group that's there and ready to take it on too. Um, so if the RM decided to do something like that, that could be wonderful, but I think it needs to really understand who the regional partners and all the regional, what are the regional demands on that? Right now, I would say, going back to one of the other comments, one of the niches that I think we're hearing from uh, adjacent, uh, uh, your adjacent uh, municipal partners is really curling in the Petersfield rink is a great rink that, um, you know, Selkirk wants to decommission theirs and send everyone over to, to Petersfield. I think that, that that is a specific piece that is worth um, building on for that community. Um, the... I think that there's a, a role to play on starting building the community groups in and around soccer and baseball in uh, St. Andrews that perhaps that, you know, something comes out of it that a group really starts to take it, but the, the investment is quite high uh, in order to get in. And what we've seen with uh, construction values over the last three years, they're, uh, they've skyrocketed and it's uh, it becomes a real challenge that if you're going for funding partners, they're going to be looking at, we don't want to overbuild right now, and if other your neighboring municipalities are also competing for the same dollars, it might be a tough one. Okay, thank you. Is there any further comments, questions? I, I have a comment, John. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, th thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was fantastic. You know, it's really uh, you, you nailed it. I want to say I, I really appreciate that on a lot of on a lot of fronts. A um, couple of questions I have is, um, I know you, mo you mentioned uh, about hiring part-time students due to volunteerism going down. Um, what is your experience with, um, instead of hiring students, um, attempting to reinvigorate volunteerism within a community? Because uh, what, one thing I get, uh, I do a lot of uh, volunteer coaching. One thing I understand from a lot of volunteers is, you know, they're very sheepish at the beginning where they don't want to get involved because they're either afraid that they don't know what to do or they're afraid that the time commitment is huge because they're just, they just don't know. So is there, in, in my mind, it's almost like, is there a benefit to doing some sort of educational campaign with advertising and, you know, a, a variety of different aspects to make people understand that volunteering doesn't, it's not a full-time gig. It's you know part time on, on a lot of cases, and maybe that would attract more volunteers. What's your perspective on that? I, I think you're totally right, and I think that's one of the things that we want to explore a little bit more here too. Um, volunteers 
do these things quite often just out of the goodness of their heart, but they also get something out of it and they, they feel like they've, um, they've given back and that they've, you know, that they really did make a change. So I think volunteerism, I think is connected to so many of these pieces and these directions, which includes things like uh, communications. I think uh, uh, communications and marketing can try to, can start to create an opening for some of that as well. So that people start to realize um, these volunteers that are out there doing this are actually having a good time and they, you know what, it, it, it isn't that hard. I think all those things can be interconnected. Um, volunteerism has been the backbone for much of Manitoba's development. And I think it's, uh, I think we have to recognize that the more we can do, uh, can um, support volunteerism, the better off we're gonna be here. So I, I don't disagree with you. And I specifically think that that is an area that we will start to um, expand out a little bit more because I think it is um, interconnected um, in, in this whole uh, process. Well, that's good, you know, and I know you mentioned, um, you know, there's uh, creating a centralized kind of system for booking slash information, getting people's information to understand, you know, what their strengths and, and uh, are in, in those different areas. And I think you'll find with a lot more advertising or a lot more uh, education in that fact of, of, of telling people what volunteering is actually all about, you, you're going to get a lot, pe a lot of people that uh, don't have a specialty in that area that'll want to do that area because it doesn't seem like that big of a challenge. To, you know, it, it'll help them get into it. Um, sure. And then I... Uh, what what is your thoughts on cross marketing at the facilities? Like you had mentioned, uh, to to start trying to utilize and maximize the utilization of the facilities, which I 100% agree with. I think that's a fantastic idea. But um, for example, Petersfield uh, Curling Club advertising up here at St Andrews Community Club, and maybe vice versa or something like that to do with the different services that maybe uh, I don't want to say they don't know about, but maybe they don't know about some of the programs being offered. Is that have you found that to be effective in some of your other projects? Yeah, I think it's it's critical. If you're already capturing some of that attention in, in one of your facilities, I think that's the opportunity to get people to understand uh, everything else that's going on. And there, there is definitely our sense of talking to people and meeting with people that there is a bit of a, a divide between South and North in St. Andrews. And I think that's a great way to get people to just to recognize, um, you know, all these other facilities that, that are that are in the RM. I think cross promoting all that stuff is critical. Okay, and I have a couple more questions. So one is you talked about the current numbers that you have. Um, are those current numbers, uh, were they collected during COVID? Um, Kelly could speak to that. I believe that they've just been, the, the numbers that we got were primarily soccer baseball. We did have some pre-COVID as well. And then we had some just from this, uh, pre, this current season. Yeah, I'm just trying to identify if we're, if we're basing a lot of it off of COVID numbers. I don't know if that should be necessarily the way to go because yeah. I think we can all anticipate that uh, the the activity obviously went down during COVID, and we could probably anticipate it's going to be on the rise afterwards once we start getting through some of these efforts. For sure, what we've done in our forecasting is we basically looked at the numbers looked a little bit down from what they were pre-COVID, uh, but so we've just kind of assumed pre-COVID numbers with a bit of an escalation, um, and and then kind of looked at how that would play out. Um, it's sort of from a facility usage uh, requirement. So you're, you're not wrong. Uh, that's exactly how we, we've kind of looked at where it was then and where we'll see it starting to grow. So we don't want to, we don't want to base it on today's numbers. Uh, we recognize that there's growth there. Okay, perfect. And then you, you talked about the uh, kind of like, I don't know if you, you call it, what name you called it, but it was like kind of like a resident advisory group type organization that would tr drive re um, drive uh, recreation within the community now is that was that your kind of intent of your comments or was there a different uh, kind of intent to that uh the, it, you know, we call it the recreation advisory committee uh we see this as it, it changes um community by community but we see it as a really um good mechanism for keeping um the voices on the on the ground uh involved in things um Quite often, this committee will also have some of council on it as well. I think it's a, it's a key part to it. Um, but it's, it's really just trying to make sure that the, your recreation director has a, kind of this small kind of working group that really can, get a, can bounce ideas off of, can bounce uh, you know, opportunities off of, and really start to shape um, the direction of things 
um, in alignment with this master plan. Okay, now that, that makes a lot of sense. And I like that idea of really integrating more residents to, to, to get involved, that's perfect. Uh, and my last comment, I really appreciated the fact on how you uh, highlighted uh, volunteer appreciation and, and you know, more so than what we're currently doing. That, and that's important because, yeah, we, what I've seen, uh, you know, when I've volunteered throughout the years, I see people drop off and they don't come back and it's stuck with the ones that kind of pick, pick up the slack and they don't kind of get a break and it turns into volunteer burnout after a while. So sure. really recognizing some of those volunteers that are out there, um, I think will help to reinvigorate them as well as for them to motivate others as well to, to get involved in volunteering. So thank you very much for identifying those things. Okay, uh, Teresa, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was just basically going to mention uh, in, in regards to the volunteerism, um, Daryl, I do feel like we can drive volunteerism um, in the right direction. I think with uh, adding a strategy to the uh, volunteerism um, with the strategic planning that we're going to be doing, um, having software in place um, that can track um, things, uh, giving the volunteers what they need to be able to do their jobs, like job descriptions, um, just simple things that'll help them. Uh, we've heard time and time again, um, you know, software, um, just having them more connected. They're connected to their own groups and their own volunteers. Um, but many times we're going outside that and I'll be like, Clan boy, they're doing this in Matlock. Let's talk to them because I don't always have the answer for them. But I think that that connection and having that resident group will help as well. So just having a better strategic plan for the volunteers is going to help us for sure in the in the long run. I 100% agree. Good comments, Teresa. Thanks for that. Anything, anybody else have any comments? Hi, it's Kelly. I had my hand up. I figured it out. <laughs> um, just a, a couple little points about the volunteering. Um, totally agree that we need to um, get more volunteers and keep them. What I am finding, though, is that a facility like the stack one in the south, the skills needed to volunteer to do some of those jobs are far beyond what the general public typically have. And that's one of the big things I've noticed. Um, workplace, workplace health and safety training of staff, um, making sure the facility meets Public Health Act for sports and things like that. That's that's all stuff that seems in my mind to be past what a volunteer is capable of doing or should be expected to know how to do. And I'm finding that's one of the big gaps um, that that I think needs to be filled. So that's one of the ones I've noticed. Yeah. And just hey, to Kelly. add on, sorry, just to add on Kelly's point, um, when we were talking about hiring students, um, you know, we're just talking just right about down, having right there. Sorry, Kelly, you're still you're unmuted. Just to have the students um, available, we're talking about uh, recreation students um, in the evenings to have the facilities open longer so volunteers don't have to sit there and, and do programming. So we're looking at more strategic um, kind of hires um, for things like that, Carol. Yeah, so one question I have for maybe Kelly, um, with, with the tasks that, that are potentially um, uh, more of a specialized skill, um, does your team use standard operating procedures for uh, documenting these tasks to break it down for people where you can break it into manageable chunks where you find that, the um, uh, reason why I asked that question is uh, through my daytime job, we found that there's a lot of times you'll need specialized skills for certain items and you can create almost like a picture book of standard operating procedures for people that they will be able to uh, take on a specialized task and do it on their own without any specialized training. So I know there's going to probably be some things that you would need for sure to have specialized training for, but, but I would encourage maybe uh, additional outside uses of uh, standard operating procedures and things like that created by somebody who is specialized uh, and it might help to be able to uh, offset some of those. Yeah, I, sorry, it's Kelly. Um, I have been developing the standard operating procedures. I have been putting in, um, you know, instructions about use of lawnmowers, uh, proper training for that, uh, even just AED checks. Um, 
just simple stuff, MSDF sheets, all that kind of stuff. So yes, we are working on it, but it, it's such a huge job. I think it's a lot to ask of volunteers who are already working a minimum 20 hours a week just to keep the facility open and running and organized. So um, it's it's just a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm very sor sorry, everybody, but I have to go. Um, thank you very much. Sorry, talk to you later. Okay, thanks. Okay, do we have anything further? Hearing and seeing none. Great, uh, great presentation. Good answer, uh, question and answers. And uh, we look forward to continuing on the path forward for recreation in this municipality. So with that, thank you very much for, for the presentation. Thanks, thank Bob. Thanks, Larissa. Thanks, all. Good, good night, Bye. everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Next uh, agenda item is uh, council reports. Uh, 5.1, Councilor Preichen. Uh, last report was uh, June 27th. So moving from June 27th uh, would be July 8th. We had a special meeting of council with uh, Oliver Volcuri. Uh, council meeting, July 15th, special meeting with Orville as well. July 20th, RRPD meeting. August 17th, RRPD meeting. August 23rd, special meeting of council. September the 12th, RR executive meeting. Uh, September 20th, special meeting of council. September 22nd, uh, Selkirk Biz. Uh, just to update on that, uh, there's you know lots going on there and we could discuss some of that in camera. Um, but one thing that was decided uh, by Selkirk Biz is um, that they're not uh, going to be putting on or a part of the parade uh, this year. So there's going to be no Santa Claus parade. Um, the intent is the Holiday Alley is doing their festivities. Um, but uh, Selkirk Biz, I guess, looked after it a couple of years ago to do it because somebody else had did it for many years and it was an individual who did it. And Selkirk Biz took it over and it's a lot of work and uh, a lot of responsibility, big expense to do stuff like that. So uh, that's one thing that came out of that meeting uh, that there's, you know, we're going to see what other options are or other individuals available, but uh, they won't be a part of that. Uh, September 26th, uh, our RPD meeting as well. And, uh, and then today's meeting. So that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Councilor Preichen. Uh, any questions for, for Councilor Preichen? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to Deputy Mayor Hobie. Thank you. On uh, June 30th, I had an ITA meeting for nominations. Um, I won't repeat Councilor Preichen's other meetings that he mentioned that we were all part of. On August 12th, August 22nd, and August 29th, I had my ad hoc meetings. Uh, August 31st, I attended the St. Andrews Community Club barbecue. September 14th, I um, had a tourism meeting uh, with Red River North Tourism. And September 19th was our cow. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Hobie. Have anybody have any questions for her? Even hearing none. Move to Councillor Paul. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to list my external reports. Uh, so on September 8th, we had a, uh, there was a code of conduct investigation meeting I was part of. Uh, September 8th as well, there was the uh, STARS Gala, uh, which was an excellent event highlighting the positive impact uh, of the users of that service and the per service provided uh, and the continued importance of it. They even landed the chopper outside of the area there for people to view, which was really nice. So if somebody wants to see that video, I have it. Uh, and then uh, that's all I have for stuff outside of the municipality. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor uh, Paul. Does anybody have any questions for him? Councillor Paul, did you get a ride in that in that uh, helicopter? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, we'll move on to Councillor Garvey. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I uh, won't really repeat what's already been mentioned, but I also attended all the special meetings in July and uh, the one in August. Um, in August 12th, 
22nd and 29th, I also attended the ad hoc um, committee meetings uh, for personnel. September 8th, I attended the STARS Gala as well. And uh, September 21st, I attended the uh, Regional Health Advisory Council update. That's all I have. Thank you, Councillor Garvey. Does anybody have any questions for, for Councillor Garvey? I don't see any, so we'll move on to Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my external report is as follows. So on July the 9th, um, um, a board member from Mount Hope, a Good Roads Association, we had a judges meeting to uh, precede and get our kits for the judging that was preceded in, in August. Uh, July 19th started with the project management team. They, called, they were called PMTs for the Netley Grassmere Willow Creek with in, integrated watershed management plan. And that the province requires the watershed district to redo a plan every 10 years. So that's what this is starting up now. When uh, we got ready, there was five open houses throughout the district. Um, to August 10th and 11th uh, was when we judged uh, myself and the other judge was from Brant Tractor. We judged Division Two, which was the southeast part of the province. We judged over 75 RMs, towns, farmyards, uh, non-farmyards, and um, that took two days. So that was uh, se over 75 or 77, I believe. I believe there was August 15th. Attended the first. Uh, there wasn't the first one. I think there was one held um, in Stonewall. I think prior to this one, but. When I attended was in West St. Paul, uh, well attended, uh, probably over 35, 36 uh, people. Um, August 29th attended the PMT in Gimli. August 31st attended the Stack Open House. October 1st attended uh, John Q board meeting and in the afternoon with Steve Strang's uh, retirement, he was executive director for the Red River Basin up in Manitoba here uh, on September the 8th, the, attended virtually the Red River Basin board meeting uh, that was held in Fargo. It was an ex officio meeting in the morning and then the board meeting held in the afternoon. And um, September 12th, attended Red River Basin South chapter meeting, uh, held just south of Winnipeg. The speakers of that one was um, Brian, Ma Brian Mays from City of Winnipeg Green Infrastructure Initiative and uh, talking about regional water resources out of um, City of Morden and the Pemina Valley Watershed District. And Ted Priestner also give a executive director update, which was some of the stuff he'd give an update from the uh, board meeting a couple of days prior. Uh, the interesting was is the Fargo diversion project that they're doing a $4 billion project yeah, with a, a B that is similar to what the uh, Red River floodway is. So when completed, it'll, it'll protect uh, Fargo Moorhead from flooding. Um, that was on okay, the 12th and also that evening uh, there was the uh, last um, PMT meeting at Gainer Library in Selkirk. Uh, September 14th attended the North Basin uh, chapter meeting which was uh, held in East St. Paul and Danny Blair uh, did a presentation from uh, Prairie Climate Control as well as Shelly Napier from Napier Emergency Consulting. Um, talked about emergency plans and 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 kind of led into or led from what the uh, Prairie Climate Center talked about uh, difference in weather and, and so forth. Um, and I believe that's my report for the past three months. Um, I have some of the information. There was there was also that PMT uh, survey was also online that uh, had been done. So and I think it's still available. If anyone wants to go on on our website, you can fill it out and. Some of the questions on it was, uh, you know, to do with the watershed, like what watershed natural assets do we value the, um, the most? And it was to name them. There was only seven questions on the survey. Uh, what are the threats and risks of those watersheds natural assets? And how are these watershed natural assets currently being enhanced, protected and, and, and conserved? So I encourage anyone to go online and, and, and do, that, do that study or do that, do that survey. Uh, the, there was five open houses and I attended three of them that were well represented from different people around the area that brought, you know, good information of natural assets and, and how we can protect them. So, uh, and I would think probably in about two months, 
that information will be out there and will be in, um, shared with the municipalities and the, and the province so that they can update their integrated watershed management plan. So, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hunt. Does anybody have any questions for Laurie? I think I uh, Lori any. missed the, uh, Lori, you attended the uh, STARS event as well, did you oh, not? Oh, yes, underneath, yeah, yeah, also on the September 8th. That was after the board okay. meeting, STARS fundraiser that evening. And and you're right, uh, Councillor Paul, uh, positive impact. Uh, they had um, um, stories from people that had needed to use this service and um, very, very um, good stories that come out of that um um, helicopter that 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 is a necessity and 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 where and also the history of where it came from was after the uh, flood of 09 in 2010 is where uh, it came to man to manitoba and it stayed here so thank you do you happen to remember uh councillor hunt what the uh fundraising amount was they raised that night was it uh, 70 thousand or 170 thousand Two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. That that the three. Okay. That and then how that was. It was three people that go to an island, I guess, and they have to. It's something like fundraisers of years ago when you were put in jail at fundraisers and you phone for donations to get you out of jail. And um, some people make donations to keep people in jail, actually. So, but these ones, the the three of them raised um, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars in basically seven hours um, to to. They fly them to an island, you know, somewhere northeast of here, and then they come back, and then they came back from the destination to the gala that that night. So, okay, thank you, Councillor Hunt. Uh, any further comments on Councillor Hunt, uh, Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, did any of you? How did the arm fundraiser go? It wasn't a fundraiser. It was I said I had donated them the meals for the spouses in lieu of, of the fundraiser. Oh wow! Well. And and that was that was on September the 9th, and it was well attended. Did Minister Clark end up coming? She did not come because of the passing of the Queen. Oh okay. Any further questions, Madam Mayor? You're up. Okay, I've got a lengthy report because it's three months long, so I'll just pick on the highlights. I've done presentations at the grad, speeches for Canada Day. Um, July 13th, we had a South Basin Mayor and Rave meeting in Selkirk. Um, there was discussion, um, it's been ongoing, uh, whether to amalgamate South Basin Mayor and Rave with Winnipeg Metro or Sear and Red River Basin Commission. The issue is there's little funding in the bank and it's just about impossible to apply for grants because most are 50-50 cost share. The province um, gave our group a one-time $75,000 grant to be used to see what direction this committee will be going in. And we'll also go towards legal fees, but we have a meeting, I believe October 18th, that um, the executive director was going to check into which way it's going to go. Uh, Sear and Red River Basin were our choices, but because there's no money, they don't really want to take us on financially. So the best route will probably be through Winnipeg Metro. Um, July 18th, Minister Clark held a virtual meeting with an update on the Capital Region Planning Board. Uh, August 2nd in Stonewall, Minister Clark and her team were at Stonewall Quarry Park. There's still a lot of items to be reviewed for bylaws, policies, et cetera, on the Capital Region Planning Board. There is still going to be a considerable amount of public consultation. And it looks like this will probably be formed in the next two to five years. Um, at this point, all member RMs will have a seat at the board. Uh, with some Indigenous um, participation as well. Um, oh, August 20th, dropped in at the Petersfield Show and Shine in the market. It was huge. I understand they had about 2,500 visitors, and I want to congratulate the organizers. It was very well attended and very well organized and a very successful event. 
August 30th, I was at the Municipal Board Appeal Board hearing at our council chambers regarding a subdivision on Pranic Road. Um, I don't know, perhaps Colleen can answer. I don't know if we get, we get the council gets the outcome. I don't really know about that part because it's been years since been at one. Um, St. Ayers Community Club Barbecue on August 31st. Red River Basin in Fargo, Councillor Hunt covered that. Um, all should be noted, Greg Best of the US Weather Service announced his retirement. He's at the Grand Forks. Uh, September 21st, attended the, uh, by invitation of Premier Stephenson, the announcement of 31.5 million at Selk General Hospital, showing the construction has started. September 22nd, attended the strategic industry meeting at Gabe Gaynor Library in Selkirk on RRC Polytech. It was an introduction to the courses offered by Red River Community College in Selkirk and the Interlake. There's a very good potential for partnerships that could be explored with this group. And on a side note, um, last week I was at Earl Grey Landfill and saw the new sheds for the operators. They're very impressive and compliments to Horizon Builders. They're really nice. The only comment I have, because I, I was shown the inside of the building, the floors and the interior are white, which is totally not practical. Can we, can that be changed? Can they be co cover that with something, you know, Councillor Hunt? I know Clandon where we went and got uh, rubberized paint and they were painting it uh, the days that they were off. So I'm sure Ron will be organizing the same thing with uh, Earl Gray. I know he asked Ron for that paint and, and when I was there on Sunday, he said he was gonna be painting it on Monday and Tuesday, the days that they were closed. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because that was that was not a good color choice. Um, I also saw the old shed um, was by the household recyclables. Um, and the operator, I'm not sure of his name, he just said this is a great building to stay so they could work on recycling stuff in the wintertime that has fumes because they have to leave the door open for the operators. So I trust that will stay the same. Those old buildings will still stay at both landfills, correct? Okay, great. That's my report. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have questions for Mayor? Uh, Councillor Hunt. I'd just like to ask Mayor Sewell why you attended the Red River Basin in Fargo when I'm the board member and you're the alternate. Uh, because I got the invitation to, as always has been. And I've been missing a number of the meetings um, because of whatever, like we have Zoom, whatever group they use, I've not been able to log into anything. You have to Question. download the app to go to meetings to go. Um, I, I have that five app. Five seconds, but to do that, but, but look, okay. In a way, I'm the I board member app. and you're the alternate. And, and as you know, you weren't, even able to participate in the meeting because I was the voting member there. I just thought it was a health, quite a healthy expense to go to Fargo to not be able to participate in the meeting. Well, you'll also note the last councillor, Councillor Hogg, attended everyone as the alternate, and I know you did not make an issue about that. Those are my comments. Any further questions from the mayor? Okay, hearing and seeing none, I'll do my report. Uh, all the special meetings, I went to all of them as, uh, as everybody else did. Uh, Selkirk Weed District, uh, July 20th, Councilor Hunt, I think you missed, the, uh, missed that one. We had our, we had a regular meeting there. Um, on the 20th, we also had uh, an in-camera session for RPD. On the 25th, or yeah, the 25th of uh, July, uh, East Interlake Watershed District had a natural uh, asset uh, workshop, I attended that. Um, RPD regular meeting where we had two, we had two of our um, uh, issues that were, were approved. Um, on the 23rd, we had another special meeting. Uh, 31st, I attended the barbecue at, uh, at the St. Andrews Community Club, talked to some firemen, the executive there, and a few other people, it was a, it was a great event. Um, 
<clears throat> on September 9th was the ARM event at Hunts. And on the uh, September 21st, a regular meeting, uh, uh, RPD, they also had an in-camera session uh, where <clears throat> Mr. Promley was explaining a few things to us. And that is my report. Is there any questions for me? Hearing and seeing none, then we will move on to, we have no bylaws or, or policies, approvals of accounts. Resolve that council will approve the September 23rd, 2022 check detail report as presented. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Pohl will move. Councillor Pohl moves, can I have a seconder? Councillor Preichin seconds. Any discussion? Oh, uh, Deputy Mayor Hobie. Thank you. I just wanted to advise that I sent uh, some questions into uh, Tim and uh, he has um, sent me the answer to them. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes, thank you, Tim. I got answers. Um, unfortunately, I was so busy this afternoon. I have some more questions on the credit card ones. So I, I need more detail on that. So I will be abstaining. Thank you. But thank you for what you replied to so far. Thanks. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Are those opposed? None, and, there, and one abstention. That is carried, thank you. All right, uh, item eight, notice of motion. Notice of motion uh, to reconsider resolution number- Could I ask, Tim, will you re re remove me from the meeting, please? Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Whereas a notice of motion to reconsider resolution number 2022-336 was submitted at the September 13th, 2022 council meeting, which stated the following. Whereas Councillor Garvey made a statement prior to going into camera stating due to internet glitch, he voted incorrectly on the resolution for variation order number 89-2022. Therefore, be it resolved, Councillor Garvey gives no uh, most notice of the September 13th, 2022 council meeting voting on variation order number 89-2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved. Oh, sorry, uh, Tim. Uh, you, you glitched there. Uh, did that glitch for everybody else? It did. Can, can you please uh, reread that, uh, John? Sorry. Okay, I will reread the, the motion or the resolution. Whereas a notice of motion to reconsider resolution number 2022-336 was submitted at the September 13th, 2022 council meeting, which stated the following. Whereas Council Garvey gave made a statement prior to going into camera stating due to the internet glitch, he voted incorrectly on resolution for variation order number 89-2022. Therefore, be it resolved, Councillor Garvey gives notice of motion to reconsider resolution 2022-336 of the September 13th, 2022 council meeting voting on variation number, order number 89-2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved that council reconsider resolution number 2022-336 to and bring variation order number 89-2022 back to the floor for resolution. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Garvey, seconder. Move, a second, uh, Councillor Preichin seconds. Any discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Hobie. Yeah, thank you. I have um, some points I'd actually like to make regarding uh, 8.1 and 8.11, because they're all revolving around the same file and case. Uh, they're regarding um, resolution 2022.336 and variation order 89-2022. I first like to say I'm really uncomfortable with what transpired at that September 13th meeting. 
I've reviewed at length this meeting on September 13th to get a full understanding of what transpired. Unfortunately for this group of council members, including myself, perception is everything and the situation in my opinion does not look good with this situation. I have a few thoughts and comments I'd like to make. At the 105 mark was voting for resolution 2022-336, which was defeated. At this point in the video, which I've rewatched numerous times, the video seems seamless and Councillor Garvey was, I believe, actually the first person to raise his hand and vote against. However, that being said, I can't see the internet connection from Councillor Garvey's and what he was experiencing from his side. After the vote, Councillor Garvey then votes again at 106, 107, 108, 109, including the five more resolutions. So if the glitch in this internet occurred only during voting for resolution 2022-336, which took approximately one minute and 17 seconds, then at resolution 2022-337, if we're following the agenda completely and as we all should have been, he would have immediately realized that he would have voted incorrectly. So then I'm wondering why this was not brought up at any time over the next six to seven minutes when he voted for all the other resolutions. Or, Further to that, if his internet was still indeed giving problems to the past, res past the resolution of 2022-336, then how do we know that he correctly voted on each resolution after 2022-336? After we completed the voting at the 110.52 mark, before we moved to recess for five minutes, which was at, supposed to be five minutes, it actually was 12 minutes long, a little more than 12 minutes, I feel there was ample opportunity to make a statement at that point that something had happened and he was voted and he voted incorrectly. I'm unsure why Councillor Garvey decided to keep this information to himself after we recessed for more than 12 minutes. Again, I'm not disagreeing that there was an interrupt disruption at Councillor Garvey's side, but I will state the perception situation for us on this matter does not look very well. Secondly, with regarding, because we have the next two motions regarding the same file, I mean the next, not two, the next resolution, uh, 89.2022, which is regarding the same situation, the same file. I am so disappointed right now. I wanna discuss the email that we received, Councillor Proyne, that you sent to a resident that you shared with all of us this past weekend. Unfortunately, this is 110% against our code of conduct. It was slanderous, it was unacceptable. But the most important thing I took from this email was that it was sent to a resident in the middle of an election, which is oh, so concerning and it should be concerning for all of us. You are running to be our next mayor and I'm not sure how you thought this email was how a mayor should be corresponding with a resident, but I don't believe it is. Had myself or the mayor sent this out to anybody in this group and the tables were turned, we would have been immediately emailed and told that was completely out of line. I have witnessed council members chastising and bullying each other for the way they voted for over the four years now. I've heard comments like, we're a team, we need to be on the same page, we need to look united in our vote. Actually, we don't. What we need to do is read everything before us we need to listen to all aspects of the file and we need to vote as we see fit without feeling intimidated or bullied. There seems to be some clear dis disconnect regarding this file and the information that some people of council have received at the dates when our RPD attended our meetings. Through my reading, reviewing and watching of a bunch of previous meetings, it is clear that some members of this council were not privy to the same information as others at the same time. So due to this, I'm going to ask for a special meeting of council and I would like to have the Red River Planning Department address, come and address with us the timelines of the situation, who knew what and when they knew it. And I think it's prudent that we do not vote on anything further on this file until we are clear on this matter. Because the accusation that we all read in this weekend's email is slanderous and accusatory and I have a right as an elected official to know exactly what I'm voting for with all the pertinent information that should be shared with all of council at the same time. What, what I saw this weekend is, is super, super inappropriate. And it would have never been allowed if the tables were turned and I had said something like that or Mayor Sewell, and that's just a fact. 
We, we, we must do better as elected officials. We're in the middle of an election. And we all know that what went out this weekend was not appropriate. And I'm really disappointed that not one person could step forward. I waited for four days to say, you know what, that might have been a little inappropriate. We need to do better. We're in elected officials. We're in the middle of an election period. I expect better from everybody. So I do not believe we should continue forward with the next two motions, 8.1 and 8.11, until we have a special meeting of council. I would like to see the Red River North, I'm sorry, Red River Planning District come back to the table. And I wanna know exactly who knew what, when, and when, because it's clear to me, very clear to me from what I've found over the next, over the last four days, that we were not all privy to the same information in the same time frames. Okay. Can I respond to that? Okay, so the information that was in the that, that was in our packages is there as the resident said. The uh, when the variation or when we approved the subdivision, it had a condition on it. One and the conditions on it, one of the conditions was to move to move the to move the approach so that it would uh, service both approaches, the cemetery and the utility building. So that was done, and uh, and then it uh, there was a letter stating that it had been done, and highways had no further had no further concerns. So all that information was in the package as as a uh, resident clearly stated. So if you didn't see it, I don't know, but I, I saw it and I have to get the same information that all of council gets. So for you to, to accuse me of, uh, of, a slanderous, um, of a slanderous email, I just, said, I just said the information was in the package. The package should have been read. Everybody had, should have had the same information. That's Councillor Proy, do you seriously think I'm going to accept this 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 response? Do you seriously think what you emailed us this weekend was appropriate for somebody who's running as a mayor? Because if you want, oh. I have I'm I'm good to talk to to repeat this email with everybody. I'm good. I, I'm not running next month, so I I think it's shameful what you wrote. I don't disagree that you have the right to send an email. But the words and the things you said in that email was super inappropriate. And I guarantee you, I, I bet my a million dollars that had Mayor Sewell sent an email like that, all of all of you would be asking for an apology and some sort of punishment or sanction, 100%. I don't know how you feel the words you used in this was appropriate. And and. You know what, if, if I was said, honest right now, I would pick a couple of council members and ask them if they felt the wording and that was appropriate. Because I'm pretty sure if they were honest, and I, I do believe we took an oath. Um, I, I, I would, I, there's nothing in this that feels appropriate to me. I'm not saying you're not allowed to disagree. And I'm not saying you're allowed to say to the resident, you may, you know, I, I disagree with what the mayor said, but the words you used as an an elected official, Councillor Proyne, is against her code of conduct. And you know it. You finished yet? All right, well, let's move no, on. I mean, Anybody really else, like any further discussion? I don't see any further discussion. So I'll, I'll Councilor call Councillor Proyne, question. I have a comment. Oh, Councillor Proyne, Proyne, I have a comment. Uh, I have no objections to pushing this to a, a later date and uh, discussing it. Uh, but what I would do is I would request that um, Count, uh, Deputy Mayor Hovey does not try to loop in people into an email uh, that and make comments on our behalf uh, for people uh, at this council. So I don't appreciate somebody trying to put words in my mouth. So please don't do that. I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth. We all read the same email this weekend. I have not sent this, talked to anybody about this with the exception of the people in this room. So there's no words being put in. I'm not talking to anybody about it, but I sure would like to see RPD come and talk to us. Okay. So de Any deputy, further discussion? So court, count, Councillor Proyne, I have one more comment, please. Sure, go ahead, please. Yeah, when, you, when, when Deputy Mayor Hobie says, if any of you would have received an email like this from uh, uh, Mayor Sewell or, her, or herself, uh, this is how somebody would have responded. 
So I don't like it when somebody puts words in my mouth and says how I will react to a certain situation when they have no idea how I'm going to react to a certain situation. So please don't do that. I would appreciate it. Deputy Mayor Holby. I, I'm not saying, I've got, that's fine. I will take that, that statement back. But I will say then that I'm really disappointed that not one person stood up and said that that email was inappropriate. Some of the language used in that email was inappropriate. We are better than this. We shouldn't be talking to each other like this. Okay, are we done yet? All right, there's a, there's a resolution on table. It's been moved and second. I will call the question. All those in favor? Councillor Pohl? Nay. Sorry, can you say that again, please? I, I'm waiting to say nay. Okay. All those against? All those against? Aye. That, uh, that uh, motion is uh, defeated. Therefore, we don't get to go to the next, uh, next uh, motion. Uh, Deputy, uh, Madam Mayor. Yes. Could we not comply, I feel too, with Deputy Mayor Hobie's request, have a special meeting of council and have Red River Planning Board appear before all of council and get a timeline on um, exactly what happened because I know the deal the, with the with um, road, the access, I was not privy to that. The first time I heard about that was when you and Councillor Preachin were discussing it at the Red River Planning Board meeting. That never came in front of our council meeting. And I think it only appropriate, we shouldn't be stalling this. I voted in favor, we all did unanimously of Valley Fiber. There was a situation with highways, not a lot, with restricted access on number nine highway, but Deputy Mayor Hovey, it went in her comments. She's completely right. I don't, I personally do not feel all of us um, were kept informed of the same information. So instead of just defeating it, table it, and ask for Red River, set up a special meeting for on a lunch hour for Red River um, planning to come before us and give us the facts. Okay, so we took the vote. Nobody set the table it prior to that. The motion was defeated, okay? So if we wanna set up a meeting uh, later, uh, before we adjourn for a special meeting, we can do that. Please don't forget to let me know. Okay, let's... Uh, Tim, can you let Lori back into the meeting, please? He's back. He's back? Okay. All right. Item 9.1 is uh, our meeting. Of course, is a correspondence for action. Who will be, be attending the August? Uh, October 6th meeting. Councillor Hunt. I will be. Councillor Pohl. Councillor Garvey. Anyone else? Resolve that Councillors Hunt, Garvey, and Pohl be authorized to attend the armed meeting which is being held on October 6, 2022 in Headingley. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preichen, seconded by Madam Mayor. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Okay. Stamp unveiling ceremony for Sergeant Thomas, uh, Tommy George Prince, October 17, 2022 in Winnipeg. Can I have a mover, please? Oh, pardon me first. Who's going to that? Who's going to that? Um, uh, Madam Mayor? Councillor Hunt? Any, anyone else? Resolve that Mayor Joy Sewell, Councillor Hunt, be authorized to attend the stamp unveiling ceremony for Tommy, uh, for Sergeant Thomas George Prince, which is being held on October 17, 2022, at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in Winnipeg. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preichin, seconder. 
I'll second that. Oh, Councilor Paul seconds. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Okay, um, down to number 10. Uh, correspondence for information. St. George uh, Wakefield Anglican Church annual fall tea fundraiser donation request. And that was, uh, that was fulfilled. Any discussion, any questions? Hearing and seeing none, then we'll move on to item. There's no old unfinished business, new business. Uh, 2022 tax uh, sale reserve bid. Whereas the date for the 2022 tax sale has been set for November 29th, 2022, with a public auction to commence at 11 a.m. And whereas pursuant to section 372 of the Municipal Act, a municipality may set a reserve bid in the amount of the tax arrears and costs in respect of the property. And therefore be it resolved, therefore be it resolved that the real municipality of St. Andrews place a reserve bid on all properties in the amount of all arrears and costs in respect to each property offered for sale at the public auction. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Madam Mayor, seconder. Councillor Hunt seconds. Any discussion? Councillor Hunt? No, you have no question? Okay. Any further, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none. All in favor? Aye. And that is carried. Bylaw, item 12.2. Whereas there was a contract reviewed, uh, review performed by an ad hoc committee, by the ad hoc committee, uh, contract review committee on the bylaw enforcement contract. And whereas the recommendations of this committee is not to renew the contract, therefore be it resolved, council support the recommendation of the ad hoc contract review committee and not renew the bylaw enforcement uh, contract. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Preichin, seconder. I'll second that. Councillor Pohl seconds. Any discussion? Councillor Preichin. Like oh. Yep. So the recommendation from the committee was to not renew the contract, correct? That's correct. And who was on the committee? Councillor Councillor Garvey, Councillor Pohl, Deputy uh, Mayor Hobie, I believe. Thank you. I like to, to ask for a recorded vote, please. Okay, recorded vote. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hobie. I would also like to state that as I stated in this ad hoc committee, I was not comfortable making decisions on somebody's contract when I've never worked with them. However, I was able to ask good questions that I felt were informative and get precise answers from different people in that committee and get clarification on a variety of matters. Thank you. Any further discussion? Oh, Councilor Preichin. Yep, just to confirm who appointed the committee. Oh, I believe that we did as a, we did a, we did well, as I, a, I wasn't here, so I, I, probably a meeting that I missed, but I'm just wondering uh, who was on the committee and who appointed the committee. Uh, Councilor Paul, you've got a better recollection of this, I believe. Yeah, so we, we had discussions with council. I provided a recommendation and council agreed with the recommendation. Okay. And the, the, also on the committee was a couple of staff members of a, of a supervisory capacity. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Four, 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 and three opposed. That is uh, that is carried. Okay. St. Andrews Community Operating Grant Request. Whereas council approved, uh, whereas council approved grants in the amount of fifty thousand dollars, and whereas uh, policy gen number eighteen requires audits, uh, audited statements, and for operating grants. For, of 50,000 and beyond. And whereas the RM policy exceeds uh, the provincial requirement, now therefore be resolved 
that the requirement be waived for the 2022 for, for the 2022 for St. Andrews Community Club and the administration be directed to review and revise the policy and bring it to council at a future meeting. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Hunt, seconder. Can I have a seconder please? Councillor Garvey seconds. Any discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Hobie. Thank you. Colleen, maybe you can assist with this. So um, I understand the reasoning for it is a, it's a cost uh, imperative issue. I, I'm, I'm going, I'm assuming by based on what I'm reading. So I'm wondering if, because I never like not doing an audit for organizations when they're due, it's, it's always really important. However, I understand that there was a transition and costs have skyrocketed this year. And I don't know if there is a way that maybe we can assist in that so we can still get the audit, which I think is always really important, but at the same time, not put, and I don't know how much they are, and maybe you can tell me, Colleen, but I'm just feeling like we should keep the status quo, but if they need assistance with the financial aspect of the audit, maybe we can assist somehow. I'm going to actually ask Tim to answer you, if you don't mind. Tim has looked into this for us. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Well, I think that would be a decision of council. Um, the uh, the grant is for fifty thousand dollars. Last year's grant was for thirty thousand, uh, mm -hmm. and they did have a capital grant as well last year uh, that brought them up close to the fifty thousand mark. Uh, but the capital grant uh, uh, review process uh, is more stringent than uh, the operating grant process, uh, and uh, and and it's a repayment instead of uh, uh, just a, a payment without. Uh, without any additional uh, uh, requests for support other than the financial statements uh, for the lower level uh, operating grants. Um, so uh, with them going up to a $50,000 uh, grant, uh, the policy uh, uh, is, uh, has been written uh, to ask for an audit at that point. And, uh, uh, and they have said that it's, um, it's uh, cost uh, um, restricted Everybody. for them. Um, uh -huh. And, um, uh, the value of an audit. Uh, I'm not sure what it would be for for that organization. Um, I would I would be guessing. Um, if I threw a number of ten thousand dollars out there, that might be too high. If I threw a number out of five thousand, that might be too low. Um, it depends on a few things. Uh, uh, I'm sure it, will, it would be greater than five. So I realized, particularly from January to June, we had you know Omicron and things were kind of closed again and. I can totally understand why they had financial implications for sure the first six months of 2022. So is there, and I'm sorry, I can't remember this. Is there any money left from the COVID funding that we could, because it was kind of COVID related that they didn't get all their funding for the first six months that they would have normally, you know, uh, selling the ice and everything that they, monies they would have normally, not funding, sorry, monies that they would have normally made the first six months of the year might've been impacted, but by Omicron at the beginning of the year. And I can't remember if there's money left for, for that, but is that something that we can discuss or we can look at? Do we need to table this to, to look into the costs? Like, I just feel, I totally understand why they're doing this, but I hate not doing audits because they're so important to keep up with a, a consistent audit with, with big businesses. Um, so if, if that question is back to me on, on what funding is left uh, uh, from the pandemic fund, um, I would have to take a closer look at that. Um, okay. I'm not sure what's what's remaining. Uh, I, I do feel that we've probably utilized uh, the entire fund. Um, okay. That would be my uh, quick response. Uh, but if council does want me to review that further, uh, I can certainly do that. Thank you. Councillor Hunt. This question is for Tim. Why isn't a financial statement enough like other community clubs you know, because they're because the amount's under fifty thousand dollars but why isn't a financial statement um sufficient so um the the difference between a financial statement and an audit is is really it's the involvement of an external body um doing a review uh and attesting to the accuracy of the of the information that's provided in the financial statement so that it's the level of uh of review is Increased, and that's what makes an audit uh, uh, more reliable. 
Okay, uh, Madam Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Hunt, maybe you can recall, but I think that this policy came into play for the audit around 2016, 2017, because past council, we had such problems with holding an AGM. We had trouble getting financial statements. And that's why this policy was implemented. And I think that's around uh, 2015, 2016. Um, I agree with Deputy Mayor Hovey that an audited statement is most important. But I also think um, this new group seems so robust, so involved. They gave us a financial breakdown a few months ago, I think, that was and came before council. That's the most we've seen in how many years. And I think, I don't know, in this instance, just, you know, I don't know what would be a council decision to leave it for one year, see what kind of financials and everything we had, because they walked into a bit of a hornet's nest as they, you know, as they've been telling us. Um, so, and they, they seem really good, robust. They're getting things together. Kelly is excellent. So I don't know. Um, I would favor going ahead with it for a one-year period. Um, you know, amend that policy uh, to relook at it once we get the financials. At the time we need the financials in January, February, then we could relook at the policy. I don't know. Hunt. Thoughts? I don't remember when why it was put in, but I'm not going to penalize this board because of a decision towards the last board, and I'm not sure why it was was there. But um, like you say, this board's doing doing well. And to me, a financial statement is sufficient. So let's move on with it. And and I don't know if a review is done. I think a review should be done to the bylaw and change it. It's kind of pointless to give them $50,000 and have them spend $10,000 of it. And um, so let's move on with this. Let's call the question. Okay. I, I agree, Councillor Hunt, that, um, you know, we're holding them to a standard that's uh, that's too high and it's cost, it's costing uh, us just uh, and them just too much too much money. Like if it's costing them ten thousand dollars to get a fifty thousand dollar grant, I mean that, that's twenty percent. That's ridiculous. But I do believe that there's accountability that has to be that has to be had. And financial statements, I think at this point, you know, would be good. And I think that we have the the expertise with uh, Tim and Colleen to have a look at those uh, financial statements and deem if there is uh, deem if there is problems and and work it out. Uh, you know, if if there is. But I can't believe that this group uh, that uh, is running would uh, would run into that uh, sort of a problem. I think we've got a new a new um, executive there, and I think they're really really good, and they're doing the job for the community. And if we don't support them, we're going to have to hire people to to run the run these places. So I believe we should move forward. Is there any other, any further discussion, Councillor Paul? I can't see you. I have a comment, uh, Councillor Proyn. Yeah, go ahead, please. You know, I I, I appreciate the volunteers and, uh, you know, whether it be the, the past volunteers or the current volunteers, um, I have to think that everybody has tried to do their best with their with their time available. Um, I, I do agree with, um, you know, removing the audit requirement. Um, but what I would say is, you know, maybe if it was uh, something that would make council a little bit more comfortable is, Maybe the the community club can let us know what their um, process or their their second check process is um, to ensure that uh, everything is accurate. You know what I mean? Because uh, is there a double check at some point? Is there a couple signatures required? Like what what is the the checks and balances that they have in their their process? And maybe they can come to council at one point and maybe explain that to council. So this way we can get a a comfort level with that and maybe we ask for a little something different with their process if they're okay with it or maybe what they have is is absolutely acceptable maybe that would help to uh ease the minds of council members uh not saying this council but maybe the 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 next council that comes through whoever those members may be i think that might be the best approach in moving forward thank you council Paul. any further discussion we have a resolution on the table. It's been moved and seconded. I'll call the question. All in favor? 
Aye. That is carried. Okay. RF, uh, RFD um, for water feasibility study. Whereas economic development and growth are two items identified in the RM 2020 uh, strategic plan. And whereas RFP 2020-02 water feasibility study was advertised on the RM website and Merck's. And whereas two proposals were received and reviewed by the Manitoba Water Services Board and the RM as part of the RFP process. And whereas Manitoba Water Services Board has indicated they will cost share the study that will provide a report that will on uh, online stage uh, that outline a stage imp implementation plan. Therefore, be it resolved that council approve a cost sharing agreement with Manitoba Water Services Board for a fee for the water feasibility study to be conducted by WSP for a total cost of $32,350 plus applicable taxes and be it further resolved that 50% of the, of the cost of the study be paid out of the dedication reserve fund. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Hunt, seconder. Councillor Garvey seconds. Any discussion? Hearing it. Oh, Madam Mayor. Yes, question. Tim, how much do we have in the dedication reserve? Do you know offhand? I don't know offhand. Um, so this wouldn't fall under gas tax money either? Sorry? Would this fall under gas tax? It, it possibly could because it is a, it is a wastewater project. So it would meet the, meet the requirements, yes. Okay, so why, uh, see, it's hard to make a decision because we don't have the financial reports. So, um, like, I have no idea what's in the dedication reserve. Councillor Hunt? I really don't know what difference that makes. Uh, do you know what the reason for the dedication fund is? Is to fund these kinds of projects. So I have no problem moving forward with this. Well, so as gas tax money qualifies. And all the other wastewater, everything was funded out of the gas tax money. Gas tax is going towards Peterfield Lagoon as well. No, it's not. Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, that was user front me user funded. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? I have a Hearing comment. Oh, sorry, go ahead, uh, Councillor Paul. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say I'll, I'll trust our administration that they've provided the, the right reserve fund and uh, that they know what the balances are and what's for the, the best of the reserve fund balances. Thank you. Thanks. Any further comments? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Everybody's in favor? It's a little time delay here. Okay, that is carried. Okay. Uh, pest control services contract award. Whereas the control of pests at all municipal buildings and at the two waste disposal grounds is required is, is a required preventive maintenance activity. And whereas this specialized work requires the Arm of St. Andrews to retain a contractor to perform pest control services. And whereas RFT 2022-05 pest control services was advertised on the Arm website and Merck's and whereas two quotes were received and reviewed as part of the tender process. Therefore, be it resolved that council award RFT 2022-05 to the lowest bidder, Castle Pest Control for the term from October 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2025, with the possibility of a one-year extension at the price form A rates tendered for each year. The three-year contract estimated total cost $32,921.23 and be it further resolved that the signing authorities for the Arm of St. Andrews be authorized to sign the pest control contract with Castle Pest Control. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Pohl will move that. Councillor moved by Councillor Pohl, seconder. 
Councilor Hunt seconds. Any discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Hobie. Thank you. Colleen, maybe you can answer this. I noticed in the analysis the, um, for castle pest control, uh, in the cons, it was the extra mileage. Do we know what the mileage is going to be for each time they come out? Because, you know. Great question. That isn't something I thought of. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, an answer right up front. Are, are they located in Winnipeg? Um, Poolins is. Yeah, I know Poolins is on by the, um, it's the, the Norwood Bridge. You know what? It'll take me half a second. I will Google where they are. Okay, cool. Because I'm just thinking, like, if it's Niverville or something, then that could have a huge impact, right? If you. They're also in Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That, that is carried. Okay. Uh, summary report, best practices for solid waste management master plan. Whereas a solid waste review was performed under the Municipal Services Delivery Improvement Program, established by the province of Manitoba. And whereas the arm of St. Andrews engaged exchange group in to review the solid waste services provided to the residents and to assist in identifying best practices for the creation of a solid waste master plan. And whereas the exchange group has completed the review and full and provided the final report, therefore be it resolved that the arm of St. Andrews Council accept the best uh, practices for solid waste management master plan as written and further be it resolved that the, that the, that the next council for the Army St. Andrews be provided this report for consideration to develop the next uh, strategic plan for the municipality. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Hunt, seconder. I'll second that. Have a seconder please. Councillor Garvey seconds. Any discussion? Uh, Councillor Hunt. Well, I know it's quite a long report and quite involved, and um, I'm sure it'll be great for the next council to to work with it, and and it gives the cost there of what uh, you know we're paying now, and um, and the increase that recycling will be. Um, I just like to make. Um, I thought Ron was going to be here to present this, but I know we're just accepting it. But, but um, a couple of meetings ago, there were some comments made about we only recycle, or only eight or nine percent of our of our recycling is is recycled. And I know that was glass and plastic, and that wasn't pointed out at that at that meeting. But since then, I had Ron call Waste Connections, and um, this was what they had said. So, um, um, although we don't officially, so it, 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 it was asked how much of our recycling from our bins gets recycled. Um, he says, all, all, and this is from Dan Cyrene, District Manager, Waste Connections. Although we do not officially track the amount of contaminants material that is not recycled in the recycling containers from the arm of St. Andrews, as the residents of St. Andrews use the recycling containers at the landfills and the dropout stations almost every week. I can tell you that the material inside the containers is extremely clean and has little contaminants. Our entire amount of recycling material sent to our facility, the percentage of contaminants on a monthly basis on average is 3%. Based on this and my personal experience, I would estimate that Arma St. Andrews contaminant percentage is below that, below this number. Hopefully this helps any, anything further questions. Then he asked, um, um, uh, further to plastics, um, oh. hi Dan, can we find out what happens to the plastics? Where does it go and what is the percentage being recycled? And he replied back, the material that is processed as our, at, our, at our facility is purchased from a large processing plant in the, in the US where it would be sorted specific grades with respect to plastics and then sent to specific plants for reuse and incorporate new products. At that level, most plants would have a similar contaminate prohibitive ratio, roughly 5%. Example, plastic bags, certain types of styrofoam, et cetera, that could not be re-recycled. So in saying that 90, you know, we're only losing two to two to three, two to five, 
three to five percent of the recycling is not being recycled. So I would urge public to still recycle and then and, because and, ours goes to the United States, it's 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 bailed and shipped to Minneapolis where it's gone through an optical sorting plant. Where the problem was of years ago was with manual sorting plants um, with labor, and and that was the problem. Uh, these are these are as we see 95 to 98 percent efficient in 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 the recycling. So with this report, it shows a lot of the recycling that can be improved with uh, curbside pickup and um, and the cost of it. And like I said in, in the in the past, I'd be the first one to put up my hand to subsidize this program because because of the environment issue that. You know, with it would save our landfills, save uh, public works time, and on and on and on. So, uh, I hope this is a useful tool for the next council. That's my comments on that. Okay, thank you. Any further uh, any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none. All in favor? Aye. That is carried. RFD provincial. A speed Reader Board, whereas the Manitoba Transportation and Infrastructure has a, has a Speed Reader Board available for placement in, in municipalities on a rotating basis. Therefore, be it resolved, uh, Council request MTI consider the installation of one of their Speed Reader Boards on River Road, south of uh, Provincial Trunk Highway 44, on as one of the rotating basis locations. Can I have a mover, please? I'll move that. Councilor Pohl moves, seconder. Can I have a seconder, please? Councilor Garvey seconds. Any discussion? Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, okay. A call was received from highways if they'd be interested. Uh, whoever got the call, Colleen, I assume you did. Was there any mention because uh, Minister Lajemodier had talked to the residents, they signed the petition on 67, just west of number nine, that there was gonna be a sign there? No, this, um, I, so my cohort at Manitoba Highways has been getting um, calls from the minister who has been getting calls from residents in the location requested. I don't feel comfortable saying any much more. I could discuss more with council later, but I think in, uh, in a public meeting, that's sufficient, if you don't mind. Oh, okay, I think it's great. But I mean, that was what, um, like I know those residents on 67, every one of them um, signed the petition. And uh, our MLA Lajanotti was to be looking at it. So I just want, since we already have three that we purchased, one of them, then maybe perhaps one of ours could go on 67. Because this is a great bonus to us. I mean, either way, it's yeah. good. Yeah. So just so council is aware, once we've received the sign, if, if council wants one of the signs or all of the signs placed on a PTH or a PR road, we have to identify the location and then we have to get approval from highways before we can actually locate it at that site. Um, if we wanna put it on our municipal roads, we don't need highway approval, but we still have to follow the guidelines on placement for uh, safety reasons. You don't wanna put it right at a corner, you know, those kind of things. So um, there's still more work ahead of us once we do actually get our reader board signed. And it'll be a call of council where you wanna place them and for how long and the data collected and what information it's gonna provide. So yeah, it's gonna be great. And this one is a bonus because there were no signs available a little while ago. Okay, great. Thank you. Because I know, uh, well, I was still a council ward four. That's where the 67, um, it was, the residents got one board to them from cops and they had one on there. It worked for a little while, but it's very bad on that section. But anyway, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, any further discussion? I have a comment, Councilor Proy. Uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we, we were able to get another one in addition to the three that we already identified. Um, you know, I, I, I know that I've heard in my area and I'm sure everybody else has heard in their areas, different areas that we need to put these in. So 
yeah, maybe we come up with a rotational pattern to be able to rotate around the municipality into the certain areas. Once we see effective change, that'll be great. And, and it, it's hard to, you know, I, I know it's probably going to be difficult for any resident if, if they don't have one first on their street, because, you know, we're not, I don't think anybody's trying to value one over the other. I think it's multiple issues in multiple areas and we're just trying to do the best we can. So I appreciate the, the additional sign. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Pohl. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That carried. Uh, Mr. Chair, it says, um, oh, okay, that included, it says send council resolution to MIT. That's okay. what we did, right? Thank you, sorry. I, my battery was dead, it went black there for a while. Okay, uh, RFD fire services review. Whereas Don M ends, MBA PD, PBDM was engaged uh, to conduct review of our St. Andrews fire stations. And whereas the final report has been received, therefore be it resolved, council will accept the fire services review report dated September 22nd, 2022 as written. And further be it resolved that the Fire Services Review Report be provided to the next council for consideration to develop the next strategic plan for the municipality. Can I have a mover, please? I'll move that. Councillor Hunt moves. Councillor Pohl seconds. Any discussion? I have a comment. Hearing, oh, sorry, go ahead, uh, Councillor Pohl. I'll keep it short. Uh, the report was very good. I think we had really, really good discussion last meeting on this. Um, and I look forward to uh, things happening from this report. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pohl. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Hiring new member, Matlock Fire Hall. Resolve that council authorize the, the hiring of Todd Politroni as a member of the Matlock Fire Hall. As, re as recommended by the chief, by the fire chief. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Hunt moves, seconder. I'll second it. Councillor Pohl seconds, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Okay, uh, Ben Harris, benefit concert support request. Resolve that council authorize a donation in the amount of, well, I guess we should figure what we want to, what we, what, uh, we want to do before we read the uh, resolution. What does everybody feel that uh, we should uh, do for, uh, do for the, for this uh, fellow who was uh, killed on highway nine? Deputy Mayor Hobie. Thank you. This is uh, close to uh, Matt and Daryl and I, where we live and, <laughs> Um, every time I drive by this spot and I see all the flowers and everything, it's, um, I can't even imagine as a parent, as most of us here can't, I can't even imagine uh, seeing that every day. So I think it's a great thing. And um, I, I'm okay with 300, 500. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I just, that's, that's an emotional intersection for me. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Preichen. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I think it should be a thousand bucks is what we should be doing. Um, Councilor Paul? I would ask, um, you know, uh, Colleen, what, are, what, are we ha what have we uh, contributed in the past for similar, uh, I don't want to say similar scenarios, but um, have we had, uh, what, what sort of resident donations have we done in the past ranging? So I, I did look that up. So something that of course is not exactly comparable, but in the same kind of focus group would be anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. Sorry, can you say that again? Say that one more time. Anywhere between three and five hundred dollars. We've done okay. you know, the high end and the low end. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I would I would love to say a thousand, but I think uh, we need to stick with kind of what we've done, and I would say five hundred. And uh, yeah, all all the best goes out to that family. Okay, Madam Mayor. Uh, can you unmute yourself? There. Yeah, it was a tragedy. Um, keeping in mind, it's resident tax dollars. Had a lot more tragedies, but this one, it was just painstaking. So um, I'll go with whatever council, what amount you set on. It's fine with me. Okay, Councillor Garvey. <laughs> You're good with what council goes with. Yeah, Councillor Preich and then Councillor Hunt. Yeah, just keep in mind, whatever we donate and whatever is raised, all of that stuff is donated back to the award. So it's not that we're just dropping off money to, you know, a hundred dollars because someone passed away. We normally do. This is a little bit different, right? So it's, it's not going to someone specifically, whatever is donated on behalf of this RM to that family is then put back into the award that they're creating and fundraising for. So it's kind of a twofold situation. Whatever we give, I support. Councillor Hunt. Well, I like 500 or 1,000. Uh, Councillor Brighton made the comment of 1,000. If he made the motion, I would second it. Okay, we have a, we're going to I'll read the resolution here. Um, Madam Mayor. Yeah, so I believe we should be consistent, as Councillor Paul said, and uh, I support 500. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hunt. You're muted. I don't know whether we can call call this consistent or not. Um, you know, this is a tragedy, like was said. And like I say, if Councillor Brighton moves a thousand, I would I would second that. I think that this is different. It goes back to to um, like it says, um, the music program students will be the recipient of this fund to assess helping them further develop in their music career. So. so. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, go ahead. Um, considering that it's going to be uh, pushed back into uh, uh, the fund for for the kids, and uh, that's where it's going to remain, I, I would agree with a thousand dollars. And that's only because, um, like like they had mentioned, it's not a, a donation per se, because the donation is going directly back to help the youth within our community. And I think that's a very good thing that we we need to definitely look at the culture and arts section. And I think this will hit that mark. So I would move that then. Okay, so then uh, I'll read the resolution. Resolve that council authorize a donation in the amount of $1,000 to support the Ben Harris Benefit Concert being held October 15, 2022. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Price and second by Councillor Hunt. Any further discussion? Councillor Hunt? No, okay. Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. That brings us to item 13 in camera. Resolve that council <clears throat> move in camera at 7.16 p.m. to discuss matters that are in preliminary stages and respecting which discussion in public could prejudice the municipality's ability to carry out its activities or negoti negotiation as well as legal and personal issues and be it further resolved that members of council agree to keep in confidence a matter that is discussed at a meeting that is close to the public under subsection 152-3 and that the committee decides to keep confidential until the matter is discussed at a meeting of council or a committee conducted in public. Can I have a mover, please? So moved. It's moved by Councillor uh, Paul, second by Councillor Preichin. All in favor? Aye. That is carried. Aye. We are in camera. Tim, can you turn the recording on? He's ready. Resolve that council move out of camera at 8 p.m. Can I have a mover, please? Move by Councillor Preich and seconder, Councillor Garvey. We have one, uh, one item to a resolution coming from in camera. Whereas there is a need Mr. for Chair, assistance. Yes. Did we have to vote on coming out of camera? Oh, sorry. Uh, all in favor, moving out of camera. Aye. That is carried. Sorry. 
We have one resolution coming from in camera, whereas there is a need for additional assistance by some bylaw files due to sensitive issues. And whereas the commissioners have access to resources to assist in bylaw enforcement matters, therefore be it resolved, council accept the October 3rd, 2022, March to March 31st, 2023 contract as presented for uh, for commissioners on an as needed basis to assist with these files and be it further resolved, the assistant CAO will be authorized to sign the contract. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Garvey, seconder. I'll second it. Councillor Pohl seconds, any discussion? Oh, Madam Mayor. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm not comfortable with the way that wording read um, because as discussed, this is to be on the one matter uh, for the commissioners to come in because it's a specialized field. We need their assistance on the unsightly on River Road. In light of the other issue we've got going on with bylaw the investigation, I, uh, the wording, I, I'm not comfortable with the wording. It should be for just that one property. Is there Move a resolution? On. There's no resolution on our screen. Could you please refresh your screen? Re refresh your screen, it's there. Any other comments? Well, it says a... where there is a need for additional assistance on some bylaw files due to sensitive issues. I thought it was we were going to have them come in for the one issue, because we owe it to the, the other residents. We have to be fair to everyone. Um, this is leaving it pretty open-ended. I have a Coles. comment. Yeah, so we had, just this, yeah, we had just discussed this and we had agreed that it'd be used for this um, file, but it would also be available for other unique situations. So we just talked about this, so it should be fresh in everybody's head. So that's where the word I would guess some comes from. Is that correct, uh, Colleen? That was my intent, correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we all discussed that and nobody had any objections at the time. So I would assume that that is still correct. No, I made that comment, Councillor Pohl, that that was for that one issue in light of the other situation we're having to deal with. Okay, um, any other comments? I see here and see none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Well, then I oppose because of the ongoing investigation on the okay, other matter. Just, that's all I want was your vote. No further explanation, please. That, uh, that uh, resolution is carried. Okay, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Resolve that council meeting be adjourned at 8.03 p.m. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Garvey. Oh, hang on, Colleen. Uh, council had talked earlier about <laughs> tabling one of the matters. Okay. Was anybody gonna bring that forward? If not, it's okay, this is just a reminder. That was a that was a resolution that was passed, and then the then then the mayor, I believe, asked to uh, table it. Correct after the resolution was 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 carried. Okay. Is there is there anything that we want to discuss about that? We can't change the resolution. Well, unfortunately, it was defeated, and I don't think that should happen. Deputy Mayor Hobie asked for RRPD to come and give us a timeline of the events because it would appear all of council was not provided with full information. And she had asked that a special meeting be called. Okay, so really what we're dealing with is, is that uh, you want a special meeting to be called? Yes. Well, I can call it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I need two members of council to send me an email to call a special meeting. Okay. Uh, Councillor Garvey, you had your hand up. Well, I was just going to suggest if um, if Council still wanted to table that, I would be in favor of that. 
the resolution was already at the, was a def, uh, can't remember that Correct. one was defeated. Defeated. Correct. That one was defeated. So that is what it is. Okay, uh, Colleen. We would need to put another motion, notice of motion on the floor to reconsider resolution number 2022-370 at the next meeting. Is that the way for council? Uh, Councilor uh, Council Garvey and then Councilor Hunt. Well, Councilor Hunt can go first. Well, I don't know. I think, I don't know what you guys are talking about for starters. If it was the one that that I left the meeting for, then I'll leave the meeting again. So, okay. I'll say good night to everybody. Good night. Good night, Larry. Okay. Let's, so, let's. Uh... So I would ask, so what I was gonna say is I would ask to then put that motion to reconsider on the table or on the floor rather, somewhere. You make that, you make that notice of motion? Yes. That would then be for the next council meeting. So that we gonna, don't have one until November, correct? No, we have a no, meeting no, on we have, one, we have one in two weeks, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so that so, notice of notion, well, I'll accept that and that'll come. Are we not going to ha have Red River Planning meet with uh, us to give us the timeline and what happened? We can do that as well, yes. Sure. Do is council going to call? It doesn't matter right second about the special meeting, but um, I will need to know. You guys can decide right now, except for Lori's not present. So I have to do that right now. Well, he's in a conflict of interest, so he wouldn't be attending that meeting. Um, a portion of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we've got 29th. I don't know what's everybody's schedule. Could be a lunch hour meeting. I just have a, a comment, uh, Mr. Chair. Sure, go ahead. Uh, do we know how long RPD needs to get prepared and come to the meeting? Like, I, I know we're trying to schedule it. I just want to make sure we don't schedule it. Then all of a sudden, RPD says, "Well, I need a week or a week and a half, whatever that is." They'll more than likely need a couple of weeks to, to prepare for this. They've, they've got, uh, they've got uh, their hands full right now. So if we decide uh, if we're going to have RPD come and talk to us first before we have, we, we should have them come talk to us before we bring this back to the table. So that we all have the, the so that we all have that information. So Colleen, I guess if you can uh, get to RPD here for an educational session, um, at a lunch hour or something. And then let's then put the prior to the next meeting and then put this notice of motion onto the next agenda once we've uh, had our PD here. Fair. Okay, everybody's okay with that. Uh, we can do a quick lunch hour thing with the RPD. Hopefully they'll have uh, time. Then they're just gonna talk about this specific item, okay? All right, and then uh, and then we'll so then I'll accept the notice of motion that to uh, put this on the next agenda. Council okay with that? Council Garvey, yep. you're good. Council Pole, yep. Council Bright, you're good. Okay, uh, you've got you've got it all. Uh, uh, Can you give me one minute? Uh, oh, Colleen, you got to speak uh, closer to the microphone. We're not hearing. Sorry. Uh, can you please give me one minute? I want to look at us agenda to see how I put in the notice of motion because I know that was the absolute correct way. I want to make sure we do it right. It's an actual resolution that we pass. <clears throat> so I'm just going to copy it and I'll update our agenda. So um, 
please bear with me. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Short and sweet, I think it'll work. Would you like me to read it? Yep. Okay. Resolved Councillor Garvey gave notice a motion to reconsider resolution 2022-370 of the September 27th, 2022 council meeting, voting on notice of motion. Okay, so do we need to vote on that? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay, can you read it? Because we're, yeah. Resolved Councillor Garvey gave notice of motion to reconsider resolution 2022 370 of the September 27th, 2022 council meeting, voting on notice of motion. Okay, perfect. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preichen, seconded by Councillor Garvey. Any discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Hobie. Sorry, Colleen. I'm a little confused right now. Um, so what am I voting on exactly that we're bringing it back to the next council meeting? That's all we're voting on, right? Just to bring it back into the agenda. Yes, you have to provide notice of motion to council. It has to be accepted in order to bring the matter back to the next meeting. I understand. So right now, we're just making it official that we're putting notice on the table. Next okay. meeting, we'll bring it back forward. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That is carried. Thank you very much. That is the end of the agenda. Resolve that council meeting be adjourned at 8.15 p.m. Can I have a mover, please? So moved. Moved by Councillor Pohl, second by Councillor Preichin. All in favor? Aye. That is carried. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening.
Have a good night, everyone.